Hello, I'm Yoni Meta, a product manager at Meta, formerly known as Facebook. It's an extreme pleasure for me to have the opportunity to speak at the product school. Today, I want to talk about a framework you can use to innovate in your space and become a disruptor. It is called Jobs to be Done. I'm hoping you can use it anytime you have to think about how and why markets get disrupted by using your jobs to be done lens. A quick disclaimer that opinions expressed in this presentation are solely my own and do not represent the views, opinions, or they don't have the endorsement of my current or former employers. A little bit about me. My first part of the career was in the engineering, supporting talented engineers before falling in love with the dark side of product management. I've been lucky enough to get the chance to learn from different industries such as healthcare, human capital management, financial services, banking and payments, as well as recently in the ads and social media space. Based on these experiences, I wanted to share my first reflection. My innovation journey has been much about adapting in creative ways in my product domain, what I had learned from other industries in terms of problems, ideas, and innovative approaches. Hope we can do the same. So what's the job of a PM? Usually the job of a PM is described as the intersection of design, research, and engineering, or you, are, you could hear as you are the CEO of your product, et cetera. My experience has been slightly different. Looks more like this where in addition to those stakeholders, there is also marketing, legal, compliance, ops, sales, customer success, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In addition, has been also enriched with a vertical dimension, managing with different levels of seniority, as well as temporal. It's a four-dimensional experience or role, and as over time, I have been pivoting when I could add more value, depending on the opportunities. Sometimes it could feel like you're the jack of trades, all trades, or master of, and masters of none, and it's easy to get into the imposter syndrome. So, what do you do? Well, your strategy is to build a rich set of tools and frameworks that you can have under your belt. Then you can think that you can use them as a Swiss army knife, adapting or creating new ones depending on the scenario that you're dealing with. And today, I want to empower you to start thinking using a new framework. It's called Jobs to be Done that will make you a better leader when thinking and discovering your customer needs. Quite often, this work is done in partnership with marketing, research, design, depending on your specific organization and team size. So let's dive into the framework. Jobs to be Done is a new perspective. It's a unique and insightful way to describe markets, customers, their needs, and therefore framing the opportunities. For example, Albert Einstein, when he was formulating the theory of relativity, he famously imagined traveling in elevators with high speed. He used this change of perspective or referential systems to picture what would be the impact of high speed over time? Not only these mental constructs help him with the theory of relativity and its formulation, it also helped him explain what applied physicists have been able to measure only recently, after a century. Through his change of perspective, Einstein revolutionized science. The same approach are using also the most innovative organizations. They are transforming innovation from an art to a predictable and measurable scientific experiment. Here's what they're doing. Instead of observing the world of innovation through the lens of what the company or industry or product and service is doing, they change the lens and observe the world through what the customer is trying to get done. With this change of perspective, 
they switch from the solution space into the problem space. People don't want a quarter inch drill. They want a quarter inch hole. From the perspective of the hole maker, instead of the drill maker, the world will look different. A first principle of jobs to be done theory is to define why people buy products and services. People buy products and services to get a job done. It's a simple economic principle. People buy products and services to have accomplish a task, achieve a goal or objective, connect emotionally, and establish their social presence in their community. A job can be anything that a group of people are trying to accomplish. With the jobs to be done, a new language is emerging. One when the unit of analysis is the underlying job a customer is trying to get done. The job, the relative steps, the desired outcomes change the way how we think about markets, customers, and segmentation. Jobs theory has had many interpretations. So let's discuss some steps from one of the frameworks that I've been recently most passionate about. Step number one is called define the market. We will use this con comparison through the framework to compare a traditional approach and the jobs to be done approach. In the traditional lens, it's the markets are defined around a product, a space, a vertical industry, specific user, demographics, etc. It's no surprise why most of the business leaders and innovators out there have difficulties agreeing on how big is a market. And therefore, it's hard to properly size the opportunities. So next time you're in the office or in your business environment, think about how your organization is defining the market. Highly likely is around the product, technology, application, use case, vertical, et cetera. But if we use the jobs to be done lens, then since people buy products and services to get a job done, then it can be intuitive to think about a market as the sum of group of people plus the job they're trying to get done. To use some examples, teachers passing learnings to their students can be a market where the job executor is the teacher and the job they're trying to get done is passing learnings to their students. Along the same lines, people trying to get to a destination could be another market. Physicians trying to get up to speed with the health status of their patients could be another market. By defining a market in the problem space rather than in the solution space, it offers product leaders a stable and firm focal point for observing the market and therefore creating value. With these new perspectives, products come and go, but the underlying job people are trying to get done is a constant equation. Let's build on another example, the music industry. If we use the jobs to be done lens, then the market could be defined as a music enthusiast that is listening to music. Music enthusiast, the job executor, listen to music, the job. It's easy how to see how over time, different products have evolved to get the job done better, faster. So let's use the case of the iPod. At the iPod launch, it was branded as iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. With the jobs to be done lens, you can see how the streaming service further evolved to get the job done better by virtually getting you access to the whole world of songs in your pocket. The second step is defining the needs. In the traditional lens, 
Needs are defined around solutions, benefits, requirements, exciters, and motivators. And again, these need statements are hard to agree on how to define them. The next time that you think about in your organization, how your organization is defining the needs. If we use the jobs to be done lens, though, since people buy products to get a job done, then it makes sense that over their job execution experience, there should be some measurable outcomes that people want to accomplish on each of these steps. To use an example, when traveling to a destination, you want to minimize the likelihood of missing your flight or getting late at the airport. You want to minimize the time it takes to prepare your belongings that you want to carry with you. These are your measurable outcomes. These are clear and measurable outcomes. Then, if you can measure them, you could apply statistical rigor and scientific rigor in measuring how happy or satisfied are your users with each of these desired outcomes. Again, with this new perspective, innovation can be measurable and predictable. Let's use the same example of the music industry. In this case, the main job is listen to music. When the user get their job done, it's intuitive that they would follow specific steps like uh, gain access to the songs, create the playlist, execute the playlist. And each of these job steps has a finite set of underlying needs or desired outcomes. They are expressed in the form of Identify where are the songs, locate the song, find a playlist, etc. By doing so, we have identified the job, the job steps a user goes through to finish the job, as well as the individual desired outcomes for each of the steps. A quick reminder that so far, we have not had any mention of a product or a service or a solution. Keep it in mind. Third step is identifying unmet needs. In jobs to be done, unmet needs are identified as those outcomes or desired outcomes that users rank high in level of importance and low on level of satisfaction. They are the important outcomes that are not well satisfied in, this, in another way to say it. So if we focus our ideation efforts around those outcomes that are unmet to ensure that the ideas we generate will create value for the customers and will help us differentiate from the competitors. Here is a classical example or depiction of how could potentially the distribution of needs would result after serving your results. You can see here in two dimensions, there's a level of importance and satisfaction as reported by your customers. Again, there's no notion of product whatsoever in the needs definition at the customers, your customers are purely ranking their overall experience in getting the job done independently of the products or solutions that they're going through. Through this map, it's easier to identify the group of needs that are underserved and therefore ideate. But there's another step, which is called segmenting based on needs. Unfortunately, there's also another aspect of components that anyone in marketing, in marketing or with past marketing background can share. Not the same customers think or experience the same way specific pain points. So in the traditional lens, you would need to segment. And great way to segment your customers is through personas, through use cases, through attitudes, through different like psychometric or anthropomorphic prescriptions and definitions. And still there isn't a consensus around what is an accurate segmentation. Through the jobs to be done lens, then if the goal is to discover a subset of customers with a different set of unmet needs, then perhaps the best way to segment the market is around the unmet needs. 
This approach to segmentations, segmentation become much simpler to conceptualize and implement where markets and needs are defined through a jobs to be done lens. To give another example, when preparing for a trip, a good portion of the market may struggle when it comes to getting easy access to an airport, while the other half might not. By segmenting the market around unmet outcomes, innovators can learn what circumstances cause different segments to exist and how to address their unique struggles. A customer, based on a specific circumstance, could be part of different segments. This is another important concept of job theory. Customers are fluid. Third step, five, fifth step, is to innovate around needs. As, you, as we have gone through identifying the jobs, the unmet needs, we have segmented around the group of unmet needs that we want to target. Then at this point, innovation becomes intuitive and measuring progress of your idea becomes almost like a scientific experiment. In fact, the goal of innovation at this point, it's so obvious as the, as, as the definition, which is ideating a solution, a product or service, that would get the job done better or cheaply or more cheaply. Build a winning strategy. Empowered with these new insights, you can formulate a winning positioning statement or product strategy. With the jobs to be done lens, it's easy to see competition with a new approach and your strategy or some potential strategies could be getting the job done better. In this case would be satisfying more of the desired outcomes and therefore capturing a higher part of the value that is created through a higher willingness to pay. Getting the, done, the job done cheaply by giving access to segments of the market that didn't have access before and so forth and so on. This is all I wanted to share about the jobs theory. And I want to leave you with a couple of books that are hopefully will transform you the same way that I, that, I, that I got the experience, that I got the chance to get transformed. The first one is the innovate is called The Innovator Dilemma by Clay Christensen. It's a great introduction to jobs theory, and it has some amazing examples of how incumbents get disrupted. Clay is also named as the father of jobs theory. Based on this theory, there's been a lot of publications and there are two, two, uh, two books that I would definitely like to, like to recommend you as great applications or getting the theory into practice. First one is called Jobs to be Done, Tony Ulrich. He's the founder and CEO of Strategy and I had the extreme pleasure to work with Tony in the past and, the, and I've been amazed by the, the work the Strategy team has done. Second is the Jobs to be Done playbook by Jim Kalbach. That was all on my end. So please feel free to reach out to me and I'm always happy to help out uh, aspiring product managers to get into the space. Thank you.